Hello and welcome to this James the Bike Guy where today we're getting to take a look at Trek's take on an XC bike turn trail or even that dreaded down country name. In front of us is the 2022 Trek Top Fuel 7. This is their aluminum version of the Top Fuel which rocks 120 millimeters of front and rear suspension, some fun geometry and a bike that bridges the gap between trail riding and what you can do on an XC bike. So in this video, we're going to go into the features and designs of the entry level version of the top fuel bike, go through all the parts spec, and then of course, we're going to land it with exactly what it weighs. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, I suggest you stick around and consider hitting subscribe if you enjoy what you see. So to begin getting into this bike, let's talk about what the top fuel is. So Trex top fuel has been in their lineup for quite some time and it started off life as a full suspension XC race bike. A race bike that was so tuned around performance and racing that the angles and the geometry were not really conducive for it to be a solid trail bike. Now over time the bike has definitely evolved and gotten more trail friendly and in fact the variant just before this started to become a little bit more trail as well. But for 2022 this brand new frame came in and in fact I've done a video on the Top Fuel 8 which is the fancier spec brother of this as well as the 9.7 which is essentially this bike but with a carbon frame so check those out as well. But our real trick here with this particular bike is it's getting the alloy frame, it's getting modern geometry, 120 millimeters of travel front and rear, but it all combines together with a nice XC style frame, a rear end that's going to be snappy and pedal real well, combining together to be that down country style bike. Now down country has been a memed word because essentially it's the melding of a trail bike, which Trek makes the Fuel EX version as their trail bike. The Fuel EX has 140 mils of front travel and 140 millimeters in the rear. And the combination of that style travel definitely makes it more trail capable for jumping or going over some rougher and more intense obstacles. But then Trek also has their Super Caliber, which comes in just below this bike with 60 millimeters of travel out back and 100 up front. And so between those two bikes, that Super Caliber being XC and then that Fuel being trail, they needed a bike in the middle to bridge the gap. And that is exactly what we have here. Diving into this frame of this Trek Top Fuel, we should talk where this falls in the lineup. Now, all the Top Fuels that end in a single number like this being the Top Fuel 7 are going to rock their Platinum Alpha Aluminum. And the Platinum Alpha Aluminum is shaped in butted tubing. You can see that the welds have been smoothed out in some places. Really chunky, strong frame design. And then they also make their 9 point series, which that indicates that it's a carbon frame and then whatever part spec comes on it. So this being the 7, this is the lowest end part spec of the bike, but the bike's not low end at all. It's about a $3,500 bike. And so this part spec is going to be mid-level and in my opinion, kind of the greatest hit section of the part spec you can grab from Shimano and Bontrager parts. Now the 8 will come with better quality parts and so on as you go up in the nomenclature. But this here bike has their knock block system, which in the front end basically allows a steering stop. It locks out the steering from going further than that, which is of course tighter than anything you would do while riding. And that keeps the fork crown from hitting the down tube and allowing them to run a chunkier and stiffer down tube to the bottom bracket area. In the bottom bracket area, we have a threaded setup here. And threaded is of course gonna be a little more reliable, a little more durable. Internal cable routing, you can see that come in through the top and then pretty neat, they tuck that just behind the seat tube into the chain stays so that the cables go through the chain stays out to the derailleur and of course the same on the brake side. But something I really like about this bike is this is the first time that Trek is adding in frame storage to their top fuel series. So here underneath this cap you lift that up and what will happen is out will come the water bottle which is mounted up on this door and then inside of here you can see and it's still in the packaging on this particular bike but out will come a tool wrap this opens up so you can put tools in you can see inside the frame that you get storage in there and then that's going to be the raw aluminum and then shielding for the cables to be run pretty neat system because it does make the internal cable routing go super smooth and then you can carry all of your gear right into the frame it's a, a little difficult to do that one-handed but you can see that all go in and then of course your door slides right back on the top 
clicks down into place. Pretty cool integration. Also, speaking of integration in the back, this is their ABP suspension, which basically means this is a modified single pivot with a pivot above and in front of the bottom bracket area. It then goes back to this concentric bearing that mates up your seat stay with your chain stay together. By doing that through the through axle, that means that you have the same braking path as the suspension. So it eliminates any brake jack or things like that. And then that single pivot style going to the back with that raised and forward pivot is gonna help with the anti-squat characteristics. That drives forward through this rocker link down to a Fox Float DPS shock. So the Fox Float DPS shock here is going to be driving that 120 millimeters of travel and very neat you've got an adjustment with a high and low position for the minnow link. Now, what minnow link does is it adjusts the high and low, and then that's gonna adjust up the angles for the geometry. And this is where the bike definitely shows progressivity for an XC or downcountry bike. Rocking in a low position, you'll have a 66 degree head tube angle or 66.4 and high. In the seat tube, you'll have 76 low or 76.4 and high and then a chain stay of only 435 millimeters. Now that combines up with the nice big 29 inch wheels in the front and the rear, and that rear end is gonna leave clearance for 2.5 inch width on those 29s. So it's a pretty cool connection with everything together. And of course, the last thing before we move on is the fork on the front end. This is one place where the rest of the part spec is a touch let down in my opinion. Here we've got the rock shocks, 35 fork. The RockShock 35 is a pretty good beginner fork, but this might be a place where you'll feel like in the future you might want a little more suspension performance and or where that top fuel 8 comes in. But the RockShock 35 rocks 35 millimeter stanchions. It does have an adjustable compression so you can pull it down to almost locked out or open it up. And then on the other side it is air adjustable so you can adjust air pressure for based on your weight as well as adjust tokens so that you can set this up to the ramping and the feel that you want out of the front suspension. The part spec on the top Fuel 7 is kind of a greatest hits area where it's getting a standard alloy Bontrager riser handlebar. This has a small rise to it, 31.8 bar clamp, of course their rhythm stem, and then Going to the handlebar is going to be some Bontrager grips. These are a lock-on style grip, which I like to see. Just bolt down there and it's going to help keep it nice and controlled. And then you do have the Shimano M4100 brake levers and MT410 calipers. Now this is a two-piston caliper on the front and the rear, clamping down on six-bolt rotors. This particular brake system is a place where I think you could get a little extra performance in the future by upgrading, but it does work out of the box. And then the drivetrain is all Shimano components. It's a mixture of SLX shifters, which are quite nice. And then in back, you've got an SLX one by crank set going back to a 12 speed rear derailleur and cassette system. So this is the XT rear derailleur, which is sort of the, the top end or one down from the very top rear derailleur. And then the cassette is SLX going from a 10 to 51 tooth range. So that range, of course, driven forward with that 30 tooth narrow wide chain ring on the Shimano SLX crank set makes for a super wide range of gearing and a pretty good connection for this type of bike and on the terrain you'd take it. Now, of course, speaking of terrain, you're seated upon a Bontrager Arvada saddle, which is then mounted on top of this Transex dropper seat post. So the dropper seat post, of course, comes up all with the push of this button over on the non-drive side. So here, just like as if you were riding a bike or using a shifter, I should say, you can press that and that'll raise the saddle up, press it again with your body weight on and drop right back down. Well, the last part of the component spec is gonna come into the wheels and tires and I really love this on this particular bike. So here we've got Bontrager's XR4 Team Issue tire in a 29 by 2.4. The XR4 Team Issue tire is a super versatile tire setup. It's got ramped lead-ins to the knobs, but nice chunky knobs across. And this is gonna work in both hard pack surfaces where it's gonna be reasonably fast rolling for an aggressive tire, but also gonna bite in super well to softer stuff too. The bike is set up tubeless out of the box, so no tubes in here, TLR sealant, and the tires are mounted up on the Line Comp 30 wheels. 
These are one of my favorite, more affordable alloy wheel sets because it's of course boost front and rear. But in the back is the Bontrager Rapid Drive 108 hub. That Rapid Drive 108 hub has 108 teeth of engagement, which is a super fast engaging hub set. And it's a place where a lot of people would upgrade wheels on a brand new bike. And these should last you quite a long time. Well, anyways, I think with all that being said, it's time to find out what this bike weighs. The actual weight of the Trek Top Fuel 7 comes in and weighs. Thirty two point four two pounds. Thanks for joining me on this James the Bike Guy to check out the Trek Top Fuel 7. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. While you're at it, be sure to hit the like button as well as consider subscribing so that way you can see more videos like this in the future.